Pack. If any of you have worked within biology or chemistry, you've run into this institute. They are basically the guys that tell us what is what. And they finally agreed in 2002, it only took 100 years, <laughs> that the definition of pH was in fact uh, this load of math. So pH is the negative log of the activity of protons, which is different than concentration, in case you are feeling very pedantic. Um, you need a quantity here called the single ion activity. And you need a reference state. And in this case, it means one mole per kilogram at 25 degrees centigrade and one atmosphere. This is the kicker. It is only in water. For every single solvent, there's a different pH scale. You cannot easily convert between them. There's another problem here. Uh, this single ion activity coefficient can't actually be measured alone. You can only ever measure them in pairs. Um, this is bad. So uh, for example, let's go with in dilute hydrochloric acid. The act single activity coefficient of protons would be equal to that of chloride. OK, where does that get me? So far, nowhere. This is what happens at the Danish Metrology Institute. You take 12 Harnet cells that were made by a scientific glassblower who unfortunately has passed, and you take 12 of these cells, you fill them um, with a lot of very precisely made things, a lot of very handmade. So you need 24 handmade platinum and silver silver chloride electrodes. Um, can't buy them, you need to make them. You need certified buffer salts that cost a lot of money. We have to buy them from the US. In case you were wondering, getting all this stuff, really expensive. Um, then you need some calibrated thermometers, pressure sensors, voltage standards, which we do in-house. It's a quantum uh, measurement. Uh, you need the ability to record temperature, pressure, and a difference of voltage to very, very high precision. And the more precise your instrument is able to measure, the more the price goes up. It's kind of exponential. Hmm. OK, you need uh, hydrogen gas and its extraction. You need a certified gas that has a certain purity. You need to control temperature to a thousandth of a degree in a 90 liter tank. And you need it to run for three days without interruption. Also good luck with that. Um, so this is the equation for the definition of pH. I'm not going to go through it. That X single activity ion coefficient, remember I told you the uh, one for protons is equal to the one for chloride. Um, <coughs> Let's make an assumption. <laughs> uh, that activity coefficient is equal to this, which is related to the concentration of ions in solution. And let's all agree that um, this quantity right here, AOB, is equal to 0.5 in water at 25 degrees, if the ionic concentration is less than 0.1 moles per kilogram. We do, we do all agree that this is what is happening. I am not kidding. This is the paper, in case you want to go find it. It is the recommendations by the UPEC um, on how to define pH. So the very definition of pH is based on an assumption. Right. So this is water. Water and only water. Um, if I want to know the pH of my cocktail, or my wine, as it were, um, then this A, sorry, then this uh, AOB thing is related to the dielectric constant of water and the mixture and the density. This gets really, really complicated. You would have to define pH using that 12 glass cells and all that precise measurement, three days of uninterrupted water flow, so on and so on. You would have to do that for every single mixture of solution in every single buffer. So if you wanted to do 50-50 ethanol water, one experiment. You wanted to do 60-40 ethanol water, another experiment. This is laborious, nobody does it, it's difficult to do. So um, how do I find out the pH of my cocktail? People have been at it for a while. This was published in 1942. <laughs> this one's from 2012. That's from another metrology institute. We're still trying to figure out how to measure in ethanol water solutions. Okay. Different <coughs> solvents have different pH scales. 
If I say that pH 7 is neutral, that is true for water, only water. It is not true for DMSO, acetonitrile, whatever else. Um, it gets really confusing, it gets really messy. So, uh, what are we going to do? Let's go over to a definition that came out in 2010. What these folks did is they proposed another pH scale. It's called pH absolute or pH sub, <coughs> ABS, pH apps. These guys working between the University of Freiburg and the University of Tartu, which is over in Estonia, proposed a new reference state that is solvent independent. My current definition of pH for water is based on water. My pH definition for ethanol is based on ethanol. This, they propose that a reference state be created, that it be a proton gas that has um, zero chemical potential. I represent it as a very angry cloud of protons. Let us refer all our pH measurements to this reference state that is actually not physically realizable, but um, is useful nonetheless because it is not solvent dependent. The key thing here is that one of these pH apps units is equal in size to one pH water unit, which means that if I said pH 7, pH apps 7, I would mean exactly the same as pH 7 in water. Therefore, my uh, trained brain would not get confused. Anything less than 7 is acidic. Anything more than 7 is basic. So far, so good. Um, I can't actually measure on proton gas. That stuff is probably um, going to eat my face. So, no. Uh, but what I can do is I can use instruments to measure a potential difference between two electrodes in various media. This is how you measure pH um, more precisely. The one I'm going to be de demonstrating up here later is based on color changes, um, less precise. But seeing as I was working for a metrology institute, the more precise the better. Um, we can't measure the standard state. It would eat my face. So we're going to have to make relative measurements. And if I can anchor my pH scale to the water pH scale, I can sort of bypass a lot of steps because the water pH scale, with its assumption, we have all already agreed on, we're all already familiar with it. Okay. These electrodes are going to have a really large resistance because of their construction. So I need to be able to get over that. And then there's one other problem that I couldn't get away from talking from, which is the liquid junction potential. Liquid junction potentials suck. <laughs> when you bring two liquids into contact and you try and measure a voltage difference across that contact, you're going to have all sorts of issues. You're going to have differences in ion concentrations and the rate at which they move or the, their ability to move in their own solvents. So that's mobility. And some very smart people over in Japan have broken this down into three components. I'm not going to go through all this. Just to tell you, we think that we might have a material that will allow us to minimize the contribution of the liquid junction potential. But if I bring my wine into contract with water, I'm going to have a liquid junction potential. If I bring my acetonitrile water solution that I'm using for liquid chromatography in contact with a buffered water solution, I'm going to have a liquid junction potential. It, it's there. It's always there. And you have to take it into consideration. Um, also, like one of the quantities I mentioned earlier, they never occur in isolation. So I can't actually measure them individually. They always happen in pairs. This is really messy. So I am going to break this down. I am going to remind you that my cocktail is ethanol and water. Uh, this is a pH electrode uh, that you may have used in high school, you may have used in your labs. Um, it is a glass membrane that uh, is over here, glass electrode, which is immersed into my solution. This is in contact with the filling solution that is on the inside of my reference electrode. That is where the liquid junction potential is going to appear. There's um, actually two junctions. One, I had to calibrate my electrode. That means that I bought 
buffered pH solutions that has certified pH value, and I brought my filling solution that is inside my pH electrode into contact with those buffers. That's a liquid junction. I took it out, cleaned it off, and then I put it in contact with my cocktail. That's another liquid junction. So they're separated, um, not in space, but in time. So one after the other, and I cannot neglect either of them. The other issue is that when I bring the components of my cocktail into uh, contact with the filling solution, which I might not know the composition of, because if this is a commercial e electrode, I don't know what's in there, because it's a secret. It's patented. They're selling me something. They might give me a rough idea what's in there, but they're not going to tell me anything. I might have reactions, clogging, diffusion, any number of complexities. I tried bringing these into contact with my cocktail. They don't work. The values that they spit out are garbage. And often, my electrode is also garbage after I put it in contact with that solution. OK, what else can I do? I need to minimize the contribution of that liquid junction potential. Um, ways of doing this are to do with matching the rate at which the two ions in the liquid solution migrate. If they match, that's better. If they're of a similar size, the larger the better. They migrate at the same size. There's all sorts of things. So one of the common filling solutions, or separating solutions in this case, which is this is the salt bridge to keep the filling solution away from my cocktail and minimize on one reactions, minimize liquid junction potential. One of the really common ones is three molar KCl in water. Um, that actually puts a space between my filling solution that I was telling you about earlier and my cocktail by putting a liquid bridge in there. I now have two liquid junctions, one on either side of the bridge. Thing is, three molar KCl, if I put that in contact with water and ethanol, it's just going to pour into the water ethanol solution and they'll mix. So we'll change the composition of my cocktail and it will probably taste bad. So I don't want to do that. What can I use instead? We found out that a uh, specific ionic liquid, so it does not have a solvent. That is one thing. So fewer species to deal with. These are also very large molecules of a very similar size. They diffuse at the same rate in one positive, one negative, so moving in different directions. We realized that uh, this tends to minimize the liquid junction potential. So we actually went ahead and assumed that it was zero. Thing is, we need to assign an uncertainty. And it was actually plus or minus seven millivolts, which is going to have an impact. Um, so I'm going to use this as my sort of magic solution to try and minimize these when I go into not water. Okay, this is what it actually looks like. Um, I am going to use the, the bridge is going to be in here. This is the pink, my cocktail, and the glass electrode is just a separate unit. And it's not going to be in contact. So no, the, even though it says inner solution, it's not in contact with my cocktail. I uh, need to also make this accessible to your labs, everybody's labs. There's no point in one institute in somewhere in Denmark and somewhere in Germany being able to do this. This needs to be something that everybody can use. So it helps if I can do this with commercial electrodes. Commercially mass-produced ionic liquid, although we needed an in-house cleaning step. And I need to calibrate this pair of electrodes using uh, commercial buffer solutions. This is just an example of a Danish produced one. Um, so if I break this down, um, in my diagram I showed you earlier, the salt bridge was this red area. This is my ionic, ionic liquid. In this double junction electrode, it's going to fill this outer chamber. Uh, this reference electrode is going to be silver sulfur chloride. And my filling solution here is going to be 3 molar KCl. It's going to be inside this inner chamber, and then that black wire is the reference electrode. That's one half of my cell. And then the other half is just going to be my glass electrode. And for those of you that know this, it is a half cell glass electrode, not a combination pH electrode. So uh, that's going to be straight into my big cocktail. 
Um, also, side note, if you use glass electrodes, whether uh, half cells or combination, treat them nicely. They're very sensitive. Make sure that they don't ever become dry. Uh, they need to remain um, moistened. And um, just as a and then um, by putting my glass electrode into con contact with my ethanol cocktail, I'm actually dehydrating the bulb. So I need to um, stabilize it overnight. Be nice to it. Sacrifice a chicken. Hope it works. <laughs> um, okay. So I am now going to tell you what my cocktail is made out of. This is going to be disgusting. It's going to be equimolar um, sodium hydrophosphate and potassium hydrophosphate in 50-50% ethanol water. That's my cocktail, the pink stuff. I'm gonna use my fancy ionic liquid uh, that I received from Germany in the post. I'm gonna make sure that my uh, temperature is controlled to plus or minus 0.1 of a degree, which uh, compared to what I was doing earlier, not that person. I'm gonna use a potentiostat that was um, old when I was born because it has sufficiently high input resistance. I'm going to calibrate with some aqueous pH buffers that I bought um, also from Germany. Thank you. And then for my glass electrodes, I'm going to use this fancy thing that I received uh, from Russia before. Thanks. Um, actually, via Estonia. <laughs> and then I'm also going to use a uh, commercially bought Hassel electrode just to show you other labs could do. And then I'm going to make sure that my measurements were correct by asking some friends and some other labs to make similar measurements. Um, don't let your cat do chemistry. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to skip to what would be the results. So if I took this buffered uh, ethanol water solution and I measured it on that pH app scale that was proposed back in 2010, I would get this value that makes no sense, which is 200 and 0.5. Okay, what does that mean? Um, luckily, I can just um, use a proportionality uh, and convert it back into the water scale, and it gets this very um, fun to type word, which is pH apps H2O. And I actually find out that my cocktail has a pH of 8.75 at 25 degrees, which means that it's slightly alkaline. Now I actually have a value that makes sense. It's not some transposed on a different scale where is neutral. I know exactly what this is. Um, the other fun thing is I could theoretically do this with any number of other solutions. This includes seawater. So for example, uh, the change in seawater pH is one of the metrics for global climate change. We expect that this uh, global oceans are becoming more acidic, but we need to be able to measure that on a pH scale. And because of the amount of salt in seawater, it doesn't actually fall under the definition of the conventional pH scale. They actually use a scale called pHT at the moment. But um, they could use this scale. And it would be on the same one as bioethanol or my cocktail, or whatever. OK, how do I know if I'm right? Um, if I measure in isolation, I could be barking up the wrong tree. So if I use a commercial electrode and my fancy ion, I actually get 8.78, and if I assign that 7 millivolt uncertainty I needed to for my fancy ionic liquid, it actually gives me plus or minus 0 0.013 pH units, which for metrology standards is enormous. But the um, other participants in an interlaboratory comparison that occurred about two years ago uh, also did the same thing, and they measured using what we call a reference method, which is expected to be more precise than what I was doing with commercial components. And in this case, we decided as a group that the University of Tartu, the ones that had originally proposed this scale and this project, uh, were going to do that measurement. And what they got was 8.75. If I use this colossal uncertainty, those numbers are actually identical. There is no statistical difference between them, which means that um, using commercial electrodes, I was able to get the same thing, so so could you. Um, unfortunately, yeah, that pesky ionic liquid and its uncertainty still needs to remain in there. I can't get rid of it. Okay, so 
Um, what happened then? We had a science moment where we went, hey! <laughs> and then we went, oh, what next? So, uh, this is a publicly funded project. All the results are available to all of you. If you want, uh, you could go and do this in a routine and clinical laboratory, show that it can be done outside of the framework of the Metallurgy Institutes. You could do this systematically across other solvent water mixtures and assign them pH values that are on the same scale as the pH of water. You could uh, commercialize a sufficiently pure version of this ionic liquid. You could um, do something about those enormous uncertainties. Maybe some way of decreasing them. That would be great. It goes on and on and on. Anyway, back to the lab. This was uh, called Unified. It was a three-year project that was funded by the EU, so it was your tax hero at work. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we have a website if you want to go there. All of my publications that I have been referencing along here, if they were produced as part of the project, they are open access. So go nuts. Um, this was funded by this thing called Impure, which was part of the Horizon 2020 um, funding. And this work was performed at the DFM, which is the Danish Metrology Institute, making sure the kilo is still the kilo. <laughs> so, bottoms up. Um, questions? that I'm genuinely curious about. So um, Anna very kindly brought in some actual uh, litmus paper. This is what a pH strip looks like. Uh, and I went downstairs and grabbed, this one is just water. So this should come out as pH 7, except for that this is Danish tap water. So my prediction is that it's going to actually be slightly basic. So the question, of course, is am I barking up the wrong tree? And this is coming in, yeah, I would say this is coming in at 7. Thing is, this has no uncertainty value on it. No <laughs> plus or minus pH, blah, blah, blah. Because the greatest uncertainty comes from my ability to distinguish color. So it gives you a rough idea, but this might be pH 8, this might be pH 7. Which is what I expect for Danish one. What I also brought, this one is vinegar, so um, when you do acetic acid um, buffered solutions, you get a pH of 4, so it's going to be acidic. So let's see if I'm completely wrong, or if Bastard needs to do something about their own vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> um, coming in actually quite a bit lower than 4. <laughs> this is going to be pH 2. You guys can uh, try it out afterwards. What I'm genuinely curious about is um, I took the cheapest, highest alcohol content alcohol I could find. So according to all of this, a 50-50% uh, ethanol water solution, it's going to give you a value, but it's going to be nonsense. Because if you want a precise pH measurement, you can't use the pH of water scale. And these strips are solely intended for the pH of water scale. So we're going to get something, but I'm going to, either it won't react properly or it's going to be total. Because um, my expectation for something unbuffered in ethanol and water, which I have tried, was a pH slightly over 7 on this uh, new pH scale that we anchored to the water pH scale. I'm getting very low intensity in the color, making it very difficult to ascertain what this actually is. So, I kinda, I'm coming back to... <laughs> <laughs> and then, this one is a total mystery, because I just took some toilet cleaner. I was hoping to find it. <laughs> but uh, it's probably got so much other stuff in it that it's, that it's gonna contaminate my ability to see color. That's going to be another problem. If you have solutions that have color on their own, because this is a color change, it would 
confuse your ability to read it further. So this is coming in very, very strongly as a base, which if it contains any kind of bleach, that kind of thing, they're very strong bases. Um, again, it's purple in its own right, so how much is that uh, throwing me off? But uh, I'm going to go with base neutral acid, and they all contain so much water that using the water pH scale is fine. And then this one, where I would say, don't use these. <laughs> if, uh, so I have some more strips, uh, if anybody wants to play with them, or if anyone wants to see the color. Um, and the only condition is that we cannot remove this reference from its bank. But, sorry, yes, questions about um, pH, metrology, whatever. Yeah. What about oil? Uh, is it, um, can you measure pH in oil and is it the same as in water? Or? So it's going to have its own pH scale yeah. in the same way. The 100 millimolar HCl solution with say 1% methanol and a few salts in there and so on, but they just go, okay, this, this is just pH 1. That's going to be close enough. Okay. Often um, it, it will depend on the solvent. So methanol is one that we've looked at because um, the University of Tartu is very much connected with the liquid chromatography community. And they're actually the ones that were really pushing for this. Because as you ramp in either methanol or acetyl nitrile percentage, you start getting strange speciations of your um, uh, thing you want to elute. Um, they were expecting things to come out before, after, whatever, and it was starting to behave oddly. And they were realizing that if they only used the pH of the buffer water component of methanol water, acetonitrile water components, they were getting the wrong values. But 1% is so little that you do not need to care. So then, follow up. Let's imagine that we're doing something with a more sensitive part of the scale, close to 7, because Stuff. And let's imagine that you've got like 5% ethanol in there. Would it's still, um, so um, we started seeing effects. Well, if you want to be very, very precise, you should kind of jump on board this new scale at about 10% ethanol or methanol in water. <coughs> and as you climb, and we tried with uh, absolute methanol and absolute ethanol, there you very much need to. The, the transition seemed to be 40% solvent in water, then you start needing to care. Below that, 10%. <laughs> cool. Any other questions? Okay, thanks.